Hey guys, good morning. Happy Wednesday. I have a day full of showings today, but I figured before I head out, I'm going to pop on here and just share some information on what's going on in the news. I think things move pretty quickly right now in the real estate market. So was seeing a few things out there that I wanted to share with all of you. Um, so let's jump in. By the way, if you are new here, I'm Caitlin McKegg. I am a real estate broker here in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, I'm always here sharing some info on what's going on in the Phoenix market. So let's start by talking about um, prices, right? So home prices have definitely changed. Um, I was talking earlier this week to someone and sharing that the list prices are actually down 18% since May here in Phoenix, but our sales prices are only down about 4% here in Phoenix. So, you know, for everyone waiting for prices to come down, they have. It just depends on, you know, whether or not that's enough for you. And uh, if you're looking at the sales prices or the list prices. So this article here is talking about um, July's drop in home prices. Um, they're saying <clears throat> this is according to uh, Nicole, who is a senior economist for Zillow, which we all know, um, you know, take Zillow with a grain of salt. <laughs> uh, so they said that the change represented a decline of $14,000 here in the Phoenix market. The national decline has been about 1% to 357000 Um thought that was interesting. A lot of the articles that I have today actually are on a national scale and um, it's kind of interesting to see what things are being reported out there and how it compares to what we're actually seeing here. Um, so this goes on to talk about home values are actually up 8% in Phoenix this year. Uh, and so that's obviously comparing year over year. And that's where things can get a little bit confusing because people will talk about home prices falling, but year over year, we're actually higher than last year. So there is appreciation, uh, not depreciation, but uh, it really depends on how you measure it and how you look at it. So be careful what you read and what you trust in the news, uh, because it can be reported in a lot of different ways. Um, so let's move on. This is another article. This is talking about the hottest spots for the pandemic and that those are also the areas that have been hit the hardest with the market shift, which isn't surprising. That's kind of what everyone predicted anyway. Um, it says nationally more than 15% of home sellers dropped list prices in July across the 97 metro areas. Um, so topping the list here, Boise, Idaho saw the greatest share of price drops in July with 70% of the market's homes for sale dropping prices that month. Um, Boise was followed by Denver, Salt Lake City, and Tacoma, Washington. So other areas are seeing all of this as well. Uh, not surprising. And uh, they do talk about Phoenix in here a little bit further down as they just compare cities to cities. This is saying that Phoenix, oh, that's not going to work. Phoenix had a 50% um, or the share of homes in Phoenix uh, with a price drop in July was 50%. Um, as compared to last year at this time, it was 21%. Now, I think that's probably correct. The way that I look at it is week by week. So I didn't actually do the math to see if it's 50%, but that is probably right. There are There's a significant increase in price uh, improvements or price corrections as we look at um, those list prices coming down. So Phoenix is definitely on this list at 50%. It is not the highest at like Boise and Denver. Um, so all of those areas are having some significant price corrections, at least on the list price side of things. Now, I don't know where their numbers are for sale prices, but, you know, it makes perfect sense that if these list prices come down, the sales prices will probably come down as well. Now, this I thought was interesting. Experts increase 2022 home price projections. So with all of these articles out there talking about how um, prices are coming down, Keeping Current Matters is reporting on how these experts are talking about price appreciation throughout the year. And this goes back to what I was talking about with depends on how it's reported, right? So yes, when we look on an annual basis, I don't think that we're going to see a negative number on home values between this year and last year because we've had such a huge gain that even if we do have home values come down by 4% since May, 
we're still in the positive as compared to last year. However, if you bought your home in May and you wanted to sell it in August, you're at a loss, right? So it really depends on the timeline and what you're looking at. So all of these experts, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the National Association of Realtors, Ivy Zellman, HPES, MBA, all of them are saying that there's going to be an appreciation forecast for 2022. Fannie Mae coming in the highest at 16% right there. Um, so this is really confusing uh, when you hear that values are going down or prices are going down. And then um, they're saying that we're going to have 16% appreciation. So this is really looking at the whole year from where we started out in January to where we end and where those you know values fall likely on a median. And uh, so I can see that we'll still be in the positive. That would probably make sense on how we're trending. Uh, but this is a little bit misleading to say that values are appreciating um, because even though they are slightly, you really have to keep in mind the fact that things have shifted and uh, depending on when you purchased, you may not be selling for that same amount. So all of this is a little bit interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about this. This is a little bit late, but um, I think this came out a week or two ago. But Sedona is paying people not to have an Airbnb there. Um, there are so many Airbnbs in this market that the locals can't afford to find housing, um, even to rent. And so there is an incentive if you do not operate your house as an Airbnb for three years and you rent it long term to a local resident, uh, they will pay you $10,000. I think it's a great uh, gesture, but anyone operating an Airbnb as an investor is making $10,000 in a month, if not a couple weeks. So that's not the best incentive for people that are in it for the money. Now, if there are people that own, you know, a second home there, um, maybe this could, you know, incentivize them. But I thought that was interesting. Sedona is definitely a popular place for short term rentals. Uh, as is Scottsdale and Phoenix, we just don't have anything like this in place right now. Short term rentals are always a hot topic. So while we're on while I'm here, right, let's talk about what's going on with Phoenix real estate real quick. I love to look at uh, our active listing counts. I'm trying to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. But we're at 17,696 today. Over here, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, and this is clearly higher than we were at in all these previous years. This is 2018 higher than 2019 as well. Um, and then of course, 2020 and 2021. So we're still up, but look at this. This is, this is not, this is not the curve that it used to be. This is, or the, you know, the straight line it used to be, this is starting to curve. So new listings coming to the market, as I said on Monday, has slowed down and uh, those number of homes going under contract has ticked up. So that's eating away at our active listings. Um, and I think we'll start to see this level off, possibly go down. I don't know. Hard to say for sure, but that's where we're at right now with active listings. And then let's check on our median sales price as we've been talking about median sales prices here. Um, again, let me try to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. That might be a little too big, but hopefully you guys can see. So we're sitting today at 450,000 as the median sales price for August. It was 460 in July. And if we go up to June, 476, and back to May, it was 480. So now we can clearly see a pattern here. May is when we peaked as far as our median sales price here in the Phoenix area. Um, and we've come down from 480 now to 450. So uh, I know that article from Zillow said $14,000. If you're looking at the median, that's obviously $30,000. You know, a lot of different ways to measure it, but we can certainly see a trend downward in our monthly median sales price now, which for the last, I don't know, going back to, <laughs> I don't know how far we got to go back, but back to 2018 seems pretty safe. I think this was COVID here, right? Yep. Um, so, you know, it's just been upward, upward, upward. So this is finally the first sharp drop that we've seen on our median home price. So prices 
are coming down. They are coming down on the list price side of things. They're coming down on the sale price side of things just a little bit slower. So anyway, I hope this was helpful just as a quick little pop in to share some data with you guys. I hope you have a great rest of the week. I am going to be back on Friday with a luxury home tour for Toll Brothers. So make sure you don't miss that. But thanks for joining today. I hope you guys have a great one and I'll talk to you soon. I'm Caitlin McKegg with the Desert Dreamers team.